Hey everybody, this is Mike over at Willwood Disc Brakes. We're gonna make this a little bit longer break time than we normally do. And what we're gonna do is go over one of our combination master cylinders that come with a proportioning valve. What we've been learning is some people are having an issue with stripping out the aluminum on the proportioning valve and also on the fittings. I've put together quite a few of these and I have a thought and a feeling that people are having a hard time because they might be either going too quick or maybe not reading the instructions. Instructions. And the instructions are something that are pretty imperative when you're doing this. And what I wanna do is kinda go over why it's so important and see how I put it together. And I'm gonna do, not step by step, but I'm gonna kinda go over exactly the things that you need to watch. Also give you something that's relative to another part of your car that you've probably worked on. So now I've got everything out of the box and I laid everything out to the side that it's gonna go on. So in this case, if you're sitting in the car, this is gonna be a right hand. And I did that because when we go to put it onto our display, you'll be able to see me doing it. But it doesn't matter if it's gonna be a right hand or a left hand mount, make sure that you lay everything out and get your parts in order so that you can see exactly how it's gonna to go together. The most important thing that you need to do is always read the data sheet. These are really important on these tandem master cylinders with a proportioning valve because on these tubes, they're bent just barely different, but the most important thing is that there's a long end and a short end. Of course, this one is the long end here, but what we mean is this one on the short tube, on the data sheet, you'll see that we call out either a short end or a long end. Well, the long end matches with the long end that's gonna go on to the master cylinder this way. So I always lay them out so that I can make sure that I've got them both even. And then as I do my assembly, which we're gonna start here in a minute, you wanna do everything so that nothing is tightened down. Everything is going to be put on almost finger tight to get it started. Then you start doing the tightening process, but you cannot tighten anything down. And a great example of this is, if you've ever replaced or put a fender on a car, you don't take the fender off and then put a new fender on or a replacement fender and start tightening every bolt. What you do is you put in all the bolts or as many bolts as you can if it was in an accident. And then you start getting them all lined up and you say, hey, I got all the bolts on. Once all the bolts are on, maybe you shut the hood and see how close it is to being lined up. That's when you start going around the fender in different spots, like the front and rear of the top end of the fender to make sure that you've got the alignment square. Think about that when you're doing this. If you tighten one part, the other parts aren't going to tighten very nicely and you'll probably end up stripping out the aluminum pieces. I've got all of our parts and our tools laid over next to the display that we're going to bolt this onto. And again, this is going to be the same as if you do it onto a firewall for a manual brake or if you're going to do it onto your booster. You'll do it onto both, but you're going to start with everything loose while we get everything assembled so we don't strip anything. So we're going to start with getting the master up into place. And for right now, I'm not going to worry about the adjustment on the pedal. I'm just gonna get the push rod started into the clevis, and then I'm gonna get the master cylinder up to where it's gonna go. After that, there's little spacers. These spacers are gonna go in between the bracket and the face of the master cylinder mount. After that, it's gonna be our bracket, and the bracket is gonna go over that, and then we're just gonna get hand tight our nuts. So you can see everything's loose. These are tightened, but those don't need to move. What we need to do is make sure that we get the proportioning valve in place along with our tubes and everything's loose so that we can have some mobility, all right? We're gonna take these out. And what I do is I look at the picture of the master cylinder, like let's say on the website, and I kind of follow along with how the tubes look. So I get it started about half of the thread in. And then remember, we've got the short end, and the long end. The long end is gonna go on this particular unit, and now I know that they're right in line. So I know that when I put the proportioning valve up here, it's gonna line up. So then I'll come down and do this one. And look, when you're doing this on the car, it's not gonna be as easy as me doing it on this display, and I get that. But just take a little bit more time. I'm doing it pretty quick because I've got room to do this. So now look, I've got all four of these tube nuts started, and they're loose, right? Now what I'm gonna do is line up the bolts that mount the proportioning valve to the bracket. And you can see, I've got those loose. So everything is loose, nothing is tight. After that, I'm gonna do it by hand because you can see how easy it screws in. And I'm gonna get these all snug by hand first. And you gotta do it kinda like you would your fender. You're gonna come around and you're gonna do each one a little bit at a time. And once they're all there, I might even just take my open-ended wrench for now and just give them a little snug. So now we've got the proportioning valve that's still loose to the bracket and we've got the tubes snug tight. They're not tight tight, they're just snug tight. Now what I can look at is is 
I'm gonna need to tighten up these nuts that are holding it onto your booster or onto your firewall. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna check everything. You see how it's still moving a little bit? We're good. Now on the car, this one's gonna be a lot more work than what it looks like here, and I get it. You might even wanna use a swivel with a 9 16th or whatever size your nut is. So now we have the studs that are holding the master cylinder, your spacers in between your proportioning valve bracket assembly. Everything is snug and tight. It's gotten a lot tighter, hasn't it? But we know that our tube nuts are all seated down into the aluminum in these four spots. Now what I'm gonna do is come around and Again, just snug them up a little bit more. Not real tight. You can see how much more I'm getting out of them. And I can start to feel that they're pretty seated where they're gonna be right there. Now these hard lines are stainless and they're mandrel bent. At the end, they're a double flare, so inverted double flare, and it's going into this aluminum. So another thing to think about is once this much harder material or metal goes into this aluminum, it's gonna be seated, and we shouldn't have any problems with any cross-threading because everything was loose and we slowly tightened everything up. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the bolts that are holding the proportioning valve onto the bracket, now we're a lot more solid. And see how everything's not moving now? First, I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna tighten these up. And then I'm gonna make sure that these are tight because the very last thing that we wanna do is take our line wrench, 3 8 line wrench, and give these a good tightening. And we're gonna go in a circle At that point, I am 100% sure that this is gonna be fine. Something that I want you to think about. Another problem that I think people have is they don't do the mock-up. They just go straight into bench bleed in it, then mount their master cylinder, or excuse me, their prop valve onto the master cylinder. Don't do that. Get this dry mounted in the vehicle. Get all of your lines run. So everything is ready so that you can either take this whole unit off and bench bleed it, which you still can. We can come straight out of these lines and into the master cylinder, or loosen these up, loosen these up, do it in that order then take these off or loosen them up but don't try to after you bench bleed this master cylinder and put it back on put these on with these nuts down into the proportioning valve tight you'll never get them started it'll be nothing but a problem so here's another question people are going to say is if i do any of that after i bench bleed my master cylinder it's going to leak and you're absolutely right it is but what i'll do is i'll find an old rag or i always have a bunch of old towels in my shop and i'll wad those towels up be below this assembly and because i already dry fit everything, I know it's gonna go back together. I already know it's gonna happen. So I'm not gonna lose too much fluid out of it. I hope this information was helpful for everybody. We get a lot of calls on this and we wanna make sure that we're getting you as much valuable information from what we've learned here at Willwood on how to make our parts work better for you. If you've got additional questions or if you just wanna find out about product, get a hold of us at willwood.com or any of our social media platforms.